Hey guys, this is known as the inconspicuous and you guys asked me if I could do a live loop tutorial um, for Ableton and for Aturia Minilab MIDI keyboards. And this is my setup I'm going to explain to you. Um, so let's get right into it. Okay, so what I assume for this video is that you have a registered Ableton license and an Ableton account registered to your email address and it doesn't matter if it's a light version or the full version of Ableton um, it will work with both and additionally you need a MIDI keyboard connected to your PC via USB in my case it's an Aturia Minilab Mark II MIDI keyboard and the third thing you need is an audio interface. It's also connected via USB and it reduces the latency of your playing. So if you press a key on your keyboard and trigger a sample in Ableton, you want it to be triggered instantly. So if you're interested in the products I've named, you can check the video description box. There you can find links to those products. Step 1. So now we are in Ableton Live and the first thing we have to do is go to Options and click on Preferences. Uh, now we are going to set up our audio interface so we can reduce the output latency and the input latency. Um, normally I use an AGO driver and a UMC audio interface by Behringer. Uh, for the sake of the video, I have to use the MME Direct X settings. Um, you have to select your audio interface here. After that, you go to the Link Tempo and MIDI category, click on it, and here you have to select your MIDI keyboard. In this case, it's the Minilab Mark II. Um, you have to set it up as input and output device as well. And if you've done that, just click on those four buttons so we can track and remote control with our MIDI keyboard. Step 2 Okay, now I would like to show you how to create tracks in Ableton, especially MIDI tracks, uh, which are important to use in combination with your MIDI keyboard. Just right click here in the empty field and click on insert MIDI track and this is what pops up then. Um, now you have to choose an instrument on the left hand corner. Click on instruments, instrument rack and let's search for a piano, a grand piano. This one here for example. Just click on it, hold it and drag and drop it to the MIDI track. Now you can see the grand piano is chosen and now we can set up that we would like to have the Aturia Minilab Mark II as a MIDI control for triggering this instrument. So click on MIDI from all ins and select your MIDI keyboard, in this case Minilab Mark II. Make sure the audio is selected to the master output in Ableton. To check if it works, just press a key on your MIDI keyboard. You can see it works and now you can do the same thing with some other instruments like drums and bass. Step 3 Okay, in the meanwhile, I've created a three MIDI track preset here. Uh, a piano track, a drum track and a lead melody track. Um, just right click on it, click on rename to give it a specific name. Now I would like to show you how to set up Ableton and your MIDI keyboard to be able to loop with your keyboard itself. The metronome is a very important tool to be able to loop accurately. So click on this tempo button and type in a tempo. For example, 120 beats per minute. Now activate the metronome just by left-clicking on this button right here. 
click on this arrow and select one bar. That means if you press a button on your keyboard you have one bar to get into the loop. You should also select one bar on this button right here. This means if you press a drum pad on your MIDI keyboard you have one bar to finish the loop and it automatically cuts it off afterwards. So now we have to activate one of our MIDI tracks with built-in instruments. So let's do this for the piano by clicking on this time o'clock symbol. And this means the record is armed. After that you go to your MIDI keyboard and on the Arturia models you have to go into the Ableton mode. You can do that by pressing shift and sample pad 8 at the same time. Step 4. Okay, now we are in Ableton mode and that means you can activate and record a loop by pressing a sample pad on your MIDI keyboard. So we've armed the piano track and it's the first one in our Ableton project. By pressing the first sample pad we are going to record. Let's do this. As you could see, there was a one bar count in before the recording started, as we've set it up earlier. Right before I wanted the loop to be finished, I pressed the same pad again before the last bar of the loop ended. Ableton stopped the recording and is now playbacking it. The pad color turned from red to green. Great! So back to Ableton view, I armed our second track, which contains our drums. So let's record drums by pressing the second drum pad on the MIDI keyboard. There's an option to arm your tracks just by using the Arturia MIDI keyboard. I'm going to explain how this works in another video. For this tutorial we are going to use our computer mouse to click on the arm button for each individual track as shown earlier. Now we arm our third track and are going to press the third drum pad to finally record a lead instrument loop. You can stop all loops at the same time by pressing space on your computer keyboard. Or you can click on the stop square right here in Ableton. Now you probably can understand how the one bar option right next to the metronome button is needed for. It allows you to finish the last bar of the running loop recording if you are going to press it during those four last beats. Awesome! You made it till the end. You are now able to live loop on your own. Via the info card you can reach a playlist with all of my live looping covers I've done so far. You can also find a link to my Patreon page where you can download the matching Ableton project to those covers. Including all the settings and instrument presets. Have fun with it. Greetings and love. See you in the next video. Bye!